This is Jake with AG Russell Knives. I'm joined here with Phil Gibbs, our knife engineer. Good to be here, Jake. Um, today we're going over blade grinds. So this is, we're teaching you about different types of blade grinds and how you can grind them differently so they perform differently. Yep. Um, this will be the third episode in Knives 101, a video series where we teach you about knives. Before we jump into the video, let me go over a few definitions uh, so that we can use those definitions to describe the grinds. First, we have convex and concave. Concave, think of it as curving inward, um, like an hourglass. Convex, opposite of concave, it curves outward like a football. So concave cavity, convex, outward like a football. Next, we have the spine. The spine of the blade is the back of the blade, this back part right here. This is the spine. It's on the opposite side of the main cutting edge here, and that is the spine. Um, on this randle here, we have an unground part, so this section right here is unground. Then we have the primary grind, the primary bevel. That is, I mean, this is the primary bevel, yeah. So. If you look at the light right there, you can see there is a secondary grind. That is the edge bevel or the edge grind. Also known as the? Cannel. Yeah, um, the factories in the northeast of uh, America like Camillus and Schrade always refer to that grind as the cannel grind. Sadly no longer with us, but the, term the terminology the endures. Lives on, yeah. yes. <laughs> We're going to refer to it as the edge grind, the edge bevel. On the top here, this grind right here, so remember this is the spine, so the grinds next to the spine are called swedges. This is a swedge. And you can also use it so that there is, it's better at penetrating, so there's less material resisting going in. Um, next on our definitions here, is slicey. It is a word I've made up. It is exactly as it sounds. A good slicey knife is good at slicing through material. So let's jump right in. There are three main types, three parent types of grinds, and everything else is just a variation or application of those three main types. Pretty much. We have the hollow grind, the flat grind, and the convex grind. Right. Um, and they go in order of uh, thickness and it, not thickness, but uh, how much is removed right. or how it's removed. Right. The hollow grind is achieved by grinding with a wheel. Hence, the wheel is what dictates the shape. You can identify a hollow grind by how the light tracks as you move it. And you are literally cutting, as I said, the shape of the wheel into the blade. One of the advantages of these is that as you sharpen back from the edge towards the spine, the rate of increase in thickness is the least of all the grind types. So probably the hollow ground blade, all other things being equal, uh, displays the most sliciness. And it stays slicey as, as you sharpen it, right. it comes up for, yep. until you get to the second curve. But yep. You're doing a lot of sharpening that by that point. <laughs> yeah. You've had it a while. You've yeah. had, yeah, probably decades of use by that point. I usually lose them before I get to that point. But uh, next we have the flat grind. So tell us about flat grinds. Phil. Well, flat grinds are achieved by essentially grinding on the face of the wheel if it's a factory situation, or against a platen and an abrasive belt if you're a custom knife maker. And just as the name implies, it produces a truly flat grind. And in this case, the flat grind comes up to here. And as you sharpen back, the increase in thickness rate is greater than it is on the hollow grind. So the nice thing about flat grinds is they're so versatile. Mm. You can make them thick for being great choppers. Yep. You can make them thin for being super slicey. Yep, you've got the flexibility you, there. You, you're, you're very flexible. Right. That's the nice thing about flat grinds. I love flat grinds. Um, next, the third parent type of grind you see very commonly on axes mm -hmm. and other large format tools. Um, it is the opposite of hollow ground. It is convex, so it curves outward. You can see it rolls along the edge here because it's got just a little bit of curve to it. 
can see in the light as it curves along there. You can see some different facets on that, and that's yeah. caused by... The way they grind these is, in essence, they grind them against the slack of the belt. So when you push the axe head into it, the belt conforms and produces that slight hill, if you will, mm -hmm. the opposite of the cavity. Mm -hmm. So on this, on the convex grind, it leaves the most amount of material compared to the other two grinds, right. making it probably the strongest. It's got mm -hmm. more weight behind the edge. There's more material behind the edge. Um, also acts kind of like a wedge. It, it widens out as you... At a greater rate. At yeah. a greater rate compared to the other two. Um, so that makes it less likely to get stuck in wood. And tougher. And tougher. So the edge is, is much tougher. Um, as you, anyone who's ever split wood knows, you can still get it stuck and really, really stuck, but it is the least likely right, grind right. to get stuck. Hence why it's used on axes. Um, not very common in knives, but no. typically big format guys. You can find them occasionally. So those are the three main parent types of grinds and everything else is a variation thereof. There are a few that are so common that they have specific names and we're gonna go over a few of those. First we have the saber grind. So this one, the saber grind has an unground portion of the blade and the, the you can do a combination or a, you can do a, a hollow grind. This one is hollow ground or you can do a flat grind. Right. So th this line right here is called the saber grind or the saber line. Saber sorry, line. Saber right. line. And you can move that up or down to increase or decrease how much material that you're taking away and increase or decrease the sliciness or the strength right, of it. Right. Those are on opposite ends. Right. But Unless with, you're a hollow ground. Well, with a hollow ground blade, with this one here, of course, it runs all the way to the back. But the only way to change between a saber hollow and a full hollow grind is by changing the diameter of the wheel itself. With a flat ground saber, much easier to change because all you have to do is change the angle of the flat grind to the blade. The maker has to buy a whole nother wheel which can get expensive with hollow grinding. The other advantage of flat grinding is if you decide to flat grind all the way to the spine, you can then change the grind as you grind the length of the blade towards the point and you can produce what's called a distal taper which is where you're essentially tapering the blade as you move towards the point, but all done with the primary grind. So it gives the designer more flexibility mm. on what performance characteristics and strengths he wants to instill into the blade. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's super cool. Um, that pretty well covers saber grinds. I think so. Yeah, so saber grinds, a little bit tend to be stronger than a full flat grind or a full hollow grind. Because they All other things grind. being equal, yes. yes. There's more material behind the edge supporting it. And not, not as slicey because the what you're slicing to, through has to come overcome the saber line depending on a lot of different things. But yeah, you can have different, different strengths and weaknesses there. Uh, next, let's talk about Chisel grinds. So chisel grinds are some combination of the three main parent grinds, typically a flat though. Almost always. Um, where one side is ground and the other side is left unground, so completely flat. You can see on this guy it doesn't even have an edge, uh, edge grind there. The edge grind is only on this one side here. Now they did that one on purpose because it allows them to have no clearance between the blade and the um, frame, mm -hmm. and that means you, you they can have that um, blade exposed without risking cutting yourself. You can just stick that in your pocket and not cut yourself. If you were to sharpen the other side, you would immediately regret it as you'd have an exposed, exposed blade in your pocket. <laughs> um, but uh, how, chisel grinds are very interesting. They Depending on which side the grind is on, it will cut differently. So it'll tend to cut one direction or another depending on which side 
the grind is on. It does change the characteristics of cutting when the blade is no longer symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So you only have, only being ground on one side, it's not symmetrical, so it doesn't cut symmetrically. Um, you can, chisel grinds, you can make them super thin and super slicey, or you mm -hmm. can make them really thick and big, fat, sharp chopper that'll get through anything. This is the Tac Tool 3, BK3. or the uh, BK3, the Tac Tool. Becker Knife and Tool Tac Tool. Fabulous piece of gear, originally designed for SWAT teams to entry through doorways and window frames. Uh, break everything up and still be a useful tool at the other side of the door. That would do it. Just that jam it into the it. frame and pry bar it. Yeah. It'll <laughs> it's a sharp pry bar. Yeah, and very tough, very resilient. A lot of strength in the spine there. You can see it has a, so this is a chisel ground, or this is a saber chisel grind. Single saber. Yeah. Single saber. So it's not, it's completely flat on this side. It has a lower saber grind here for a more obtuse angle, mm -hmm. making it a thicker edge. So that's just some of the ways you can mess with the different parent ones and, get, and kind of uh, get different results. Indeed. Uh, next we have the Scandi grind. This one is, I'd say, becoming more popular recently. Mm -hmm. Just kind of people like find ones they like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very traditional Scandinavian grind, Scandi grind. It is a saber. It is a saber grind, but the thing that really sets apart the Scandi grind is that it doesn't have two grinds. It only has one primary grind, which is also the edge grind. So this whole section right here, let's see if I get it on the camera here. This whole section is the edge grind. On a normal blade, the edge grind is just that little tiny piece, that little bit in the light there. This one is that entire. That entire section, yeah, that just lit up right there. That entire section is the primary grind. Both sides on are ground to zero. Yeah, flat ground to zero mm -hmm. thickness. To make that point. Um, e the concept of sharpening is easier because you could just put that whole thing and just put it flat on the stone and you sharpen it like that. Now you have to remove a lot of steel mm. every time you need to sharpen it. You gotta be patient. Um, so not my favorite for that main reason right there. Yeah, um, You can do a micro bevel by doing some stropping or a ceramic rods yeah, or some absolutely. other way to just put a small little, um, small little uh, secondary bevel right there. That's how I would do it. Or honestly, I would just buy one that already had a secondary bevel. Mm -hmm. But um, very interesting, traditional Scandinavian grind. Very, very traditional. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so next, let's... This is what's called a compound ground. So we take two grinds and we put them together in the same blade. This one has a hollow grind on the main cutting edge and a convex grind, which is the opposite of a hollow grind, on the tip. So as I move it in the light, you can see how the light goes in different directions there. One's going up and one's going down. Um, this one has that scoop, that hollow grind, and that's gonna make it really slicey. And this one has the convex grind on the tip which makes it for a stronger tip. It's got more material there, yeah. less much, like, much, less much fragile. Beefy. Yeah, much beefier tip. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool combination. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with these kind of grinds is that uh, you'll want to do it in two different sharpening uh, sections here. Otherwise, you will. Oh, it's going out of focus. Otherwise, you will grind over your transition line, and it'll look funky. Mm. Um, we have a similar one here, the Sog Kiku. Tell us a little bit about that, Phil. Yeah, these are essentially uh, custom-made knives. These are all hand grind by Kiku himself. Um, our primary grind there is a nice hollow grind. There you go. Yeah, and just notice the beginning of the grind, how that is also a very gentle roll-in, very, very difficult to achieve, beautifully done. And then at the point here, we have a nice flat grind as well as a flat ground swedge for a really elegant blade. Mm -hmm. You get that reinforced tip, but it it's, uh, still has good penetration mm -hmm. power there. Be beautiful, essentially yeah. a, hand a handmade knife. Yeah, these are discontinued, mm -hmm. so uh, if you like that, you better pick it up fast, because I don't know how, how long they're gonna last. I do love the micarta handles mm -hmm. too, they're nice. Very nicely done. Yeah. So that's going to uh, cover our main Different grinds here, we got the three main parent ones, hollow, flat, and convex, and then we have several different um, 
combinations of those, it's different sabers, chisel grinds, scandy grind, and compound grinds. Again, you could do many, many different variations. Those are the main ones with the kind of names that are fairly known. Um, but so, but those are those are the main ones. So if this was interesting to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We'll be going doing more videos like these. We'll be talking about blade shapes, um, different handle materials, and some, some uh, why you might choose one handle material over another. Let, let me know if there's something particular you want us to talk about. Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.